Hello and welcome back. My name is Sean, also known as Chili Chump. I'm an absolute geek when it comes to gardening. I love optimizing the entire process. I monitor things like temperature, humidity, light sensor readings, barometric readings, and all that information is used to help me optimize the whole process of growing. Now, for the most part, I build the software myself. I code it up myself, and that's part of the fun. I'm a bit of a techie at heart. I also develop and build a lot of the hardware that I use. If you do want to learn how to develop these platforms, then go check out my second channel, Chili Chump 2. I actually show you how. I got a whole series on how to develop your own IoT devices to monitor these sort of things and also even control your greenhouses. But if you don't have the time to do it or the inclination, there are some great solutions out there. And today we're going to be talking about one. A company named UbiBot reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to try out some of our hardware? And I said, absolutely, I'd love to check it out. I've been running this for the last few weeks and testing it out. And I'm going to give you my thoughts at the end of this video. But first, let's get back to when I actually unboxed it. Let's see what came in the box. They sent out a couple devices for me to test out. One is this one here, which is the WS1 Pro. And it's more of a consumer unit, I think. It's very pretty looking, uh, very slick. The other one I got sent, I made sure they sent me this one, is one that looks a little bit more industrial. And this here, I'm really keen to check out. I'd love to be able to build something that looks this good. But that's a nice size screen and it'll be interesting to see how this displays in the sunlight. They also sent a bunch of attachments to work with this. Basically this whole system is modular. You can see at the bottom there's some ports Looks like a standard 3.5 mil audio jack. And I think there's another one there. Oh no, that's the power jack. I think that might be, is that, yeah, that's USB-C. I'm impressed. Thought they'd use micro USB. But it has a few ports that you can add on other devices. If that will get back in. Built in, I think that is a humidity and temperature port. At the top here, that looks like it will check out how bright it is. And then obviously the screen, there's a couple jacks on the side here. This is Wi-Fi enabled, so there's an antenna, which I'll stick on in a bit. You can also use an RJ45, so if you want to plug that directly into your network. And yeah, there's a couple buttons on the side, menu button, power button. Just momentary buttons. So yeah, that's that. There are a whole bunch of these extras added in. This here is a soil temperature and the moisture sensor. Uh, this here I think is just another humidity and temperature sensor which is inside a little screen so that's nice. And over here that's just a plug I think to charge it up because this has got a battery in a 2900 milliamp hour battery. They also sent this little case because I don't think this is really very weatherproof or waterproof so this can go inside this cover. And that thing can hang inside your greenhouse where, of course, there's a bit more humidity. I think you can actually put this outdoors as well. I've got a small USB battery pack. That should do the job to charge it up and start it up. There we go. Okay, so it's talking to me. <laughs> uh, it says to launch the UbiBot app, so I'm guessing app. So you can see the screen there. Uh, you can see it's plugged in, sunlight's 234 times 10, so 2300 lux at the moment, which is about right because it is overcast and rainy right now. But if we cover that over, how quick are those readings? Yeah, it drops down. So it's taking a reading, it looks like every four or five seconds. It's still talking to me. <laughs> So we'll let that charge for a little while and we'll open up the other UbiBot device. So like I said, this looks a bit more pretty, I guess you want to say, more consumer unit. Uh, it does look good. Let's open this up and see what it's like out the box. This looks very similar to something you'd see on your wall in your house that controls your temperatures. So your thermostat, things like that. We have something in the UK called Hive, which at first glance this looks like, but uh, yeah. 
Just take that off. Ooh, always satisfying. So there we go. Uh, this is using double A's, so four double A's, which I'm gonna have to get. If you don't have Wi-Fi or if this is somewhere remote, then you could use a SIM card in here. Uh, looks again like there's a light sensor in the front. I'm guessing that's a light sensor. We'll see when we start testing it out. And interesting to note that it's using micro USB, not USB-C like the other one. It says this device is not waterproof. Please protect it from water leakage. Optimal operation environment is 10% to 90% relative humidity. Long-term exposure to high humidity humidity or high humid environment over 90% may damage the circuit board and cause electrical leakage which is why we have this pack over here rubberized fuel and that is a strap it looks like so you can hang it yeah so it's all fully accessible I think you can access the sensors through the bottom there. So sensors like this, which is an external sensor. I'm sure it has sensors built in, which is why we have this little gap there, unless that's another speaker to speak to me. But yeah, these sensors will be plugged in via micro USB, so I can have that somewhere else. For the most part, it's really well made. This a little flimsy, but I mean, hey, you're not going to be playing with that too much. But the rest of it feels pretty strong. This, not so much. I wonder if this one is going to talk to me as well. Maybe they don't like rechargeable. Oh, wait. Please launch the app. It's talking to me as well. Uh, but yeah, there we go. These batteries are okay. They're only half charged, but that's fine. <laughs> the actual failed. Shh. <laughs> wow. Like you can see here, this has a temperature and humidity sensor built in, as well as a lux meter, so you can see basically how bright it is. Let's go and check out the industrial version of this and see if the experience is any different. I do like the nice big screen. Uh, we've got the light rating here. I don't know how to switch over. Oh, there we go. Just. I have massive fingers. Unless I'm like getting my nail in there, it's not actually detecting me pressing anything. So maybe think of a bit of a bigger button for us big fingered people. Okay, Wi Fi setup mode is active. So let's add new device. Uh, yep, that's my same code. Uh, so we've got the choice there. A little bit different setup to the other one, which is we can choose between Wi Fi or Ethernet. So it's a good option. So I need to do the same sort of thing as I did before, uh, connect here. The action, the action succeeded. Okay. Let's take a look at this and see what we have going on. Minimum and maximum 20.4 degrees Celsius. Doesn't feel that warm in the greenhouse, so I don't know if that's reading a bit high. I don't know if it's picking up me being close to it. Guessing it's that. I haven't plugged in the Wi Fi antenna. <laughs> uh, that's probably why it's battling with the Wi Fi. Let me stick that in. It's going to give a far better signal. There we go. I'm going to go and play with this for a little while now and get used to it, get familiar with it, and I'll come back to you and let you know my thoughts. I have been using this now for quite a few weeks and I've been monitoring it very closely because we are coming towards the end of winter and edging into spring so we're waiting for the last frosts. I have a lot of my plants already here in the greenhouse and keeping track of the temperature is hugely important because with chili plants if the roots freeze the plants will die. So I've been keeping a very close eye. I've really enjoyed the alarm feature so it does send you a email or it'll alert you as a push notification on your phone and that's been great it tells me when it goes below a certain temperature and then I can make a decision whether I want to come out here if there's anything I need to do if I was choosing one for myself this would be the one I'd go for purely because it is it's built for this sort of environment this one here I don't see it having any problem in this environment but I think you'll probably get more longevity on this 
The battery life on these devices uh, a little mixed. This one here has done amazingly. I'm using rechargeable batteries that were only half charged and the charge notification over here has not gone down. It's still showing half a charge. It's been sending data every 15 minutes, multiple readings. It takes a reading every five minutes and that's customizable. But every five minutes it takes a reading and then every 15 minutes it'll send all those readings across over the Wi-Fi. And yeah, like I said, it's still <laughs> half, half the battery life in there. And I'm sure that'll be going for quite a few more weeks. On this one here, you can see I have a battery pack and I have to charge this fully once every four or five days. And again, I'm using the same settings. I'm doing every 15 minutes, sending the data, taking readings every five minutes. The bottom line is I've been really impressed with these devices. They are seriously well built. I'm really impressed with that. I'm a bit jealous, to be honest. Uh, I'm busy building my own new device to monitor this greenhouse and I'll be using that side by side with this. It looks nowhere near as good as this and some of the features and functions in here, I'm really impressed with. The ease of use of the software, it's very easy to use. The application on the phone, really impressed with it. There's a couple little things that could be improved and I'm sure over time they will. Uh, some of the graphs, the way that they work, depending on the size of your screen, it can be a bit odd but it has all the information you need. You can change the different time scales. So whether you want the last three hours, the last 24 hours, the last week, you can do all that and it'll show you in each of the different graphs. So it's very customizable from that perspective. But from a hardware perspective, this is just beautiful. Love it. Um, and this one obviously just, it looks like something you'd have in your house anyway. I get sent a lot of these sorts of devices and I get to test them out and there's a reason I don't show you a lot of videos of those or promote those products. If I don't believe that the product is something I would buy personally, then I'm not going to tell you guys to buy it. That's just not fair. These, however, if I wasn't building my own devices, these are definitely something I would go out and buy. I'd probably buy that one there. So I've got no problem at all recommending if you are in the same position, if you don't want to go and build your own devices. You don't want to go and fiddle around with a soldering iron and you know mess around with some software and coding, then these are great. And if you do want to monitor your greenhouse, you can't go wrong with either of these, to be honest. I do have links down below in the description and it's a little bit of a kickback to the channel. So it helps me make more of these sorts of videos, but it's no extra cost to you, but go check out the links down below. Like I said, Personally, I would probably recommend this guy over here. Um, but this does look nice and the battery life is amazing. So just take that into consideration. Battery life on that, if you don't have external power, that might be a little bit limiting unless you can you know, come and give it a charge once a week using a battery pack like this. If you have any questions about either of these devices, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. If I can't answer, I'll get in touch with the manufacturer and uh, I'll get the answer from them. I will be running these devices both over the coming year and I'll let you know if anything goes wrong with them, if I have any major problems with them, any frustrations, I'll let you know as the year progresses and feel free to ask me about that in future videos or even on my live streams and I'll happily answer. And uh, yeah, I'll give you my thoughts at the end of the year. We'll have a bit of a long-term use of these products and we'll see how we feel at the end of the year if we're as positive about it as I am right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, stay spicy.